um, so um, first of all, uh, I want to say that um, this this expression, this word, cinemography, uh, the, the first person who talked about it was Serge Dene, that is um, cinema critics uh, that works for Cahiers du Cinéma, that is a very famous uh, magazine about uh, cinema and cinema studies. And he he said he was uh, talking about the the intimistic cinema in the eighties, uh, especially the French cinema uh, that talks about. Uh, he said uh, little things like uh, a couple, a person, uh, a feeling, and and he said it, it could be interesting if we can have a city demographer to study this, this appearance of the population uh, in the films. He said that uh, in the beginning of the cinema, when cinema emerged, uh, also the projections, the, the theaters, were very uh, crowded, very densely populated. And also the DHS, the film itself, the, the, we have a lot of characters in the movies, in the DHS of the movies. And uh, we have a lot of people in the theater watching the movies. And in the 80s, um, these, these two populations disappeared. Uh, the films uh, started um, being uh, smaller uh, with the less characters uh, talking about a couple, uh, one person, or, or a feeling. And, and the theaters also started to, uh, we have a decrease, uh, an audience crisis, and the theaters also started being empty. Uh, so he, he said it could be interesting to have a cine demographer. And I am a cine demographer <laughs> because that's why I study. I study the, the populations of the cinema, the cinema population. Um, we can think about at least three populations. The, the characters, the population, the filmed population, that uh, Dane, um, Dane said it was um, film, the filmed being. Uh, I, I also studied another population that uh, the crews of the, the movies, the, the cinema staff, the movies, uh, the individuals that works for cinema production and the audience. We can talk about these three. I, I studied the filmed population and the, that I, I call the population that films, you know, the, the filming population, the, the crews and the characters. Uh, so, um, and we can think that um, the emerged, emergence of, of cinema and the demographic transition were synchronic phenomena. Uh, they, they, the, 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 this, uh, looking for this uh, this image in movement um, was synchronic uh, with the same uh, uh, phenomena that happens that uh, that uh, uh, happened in the, at the same time as the demographic transitions, the urbanization, the the progress, development of the uh, the cities, the the modernization, uh, so all these processes are synchronic. Um, the, the political power of this of cinema was quickly realized since its beginning. Uh, cinema can be seen as a very potential tool for disseminating ideas, prejudices of the ones who uh, are in charge, who command the, the cinema production. So the, the imaginaries carry interpretations, uh, prejudices, desires of those who command the cinema production. So um, we can think of two, no, of three at least, um, relations between this population that films and the filmed population. The first one is when the filmmakers turn 
the, the film, the focus of the film, to the social groups to which they belong. So they represent uh, their peers. So we assume that the filmed population resembles the filming population. Uh, the second uh, kind of uh, relationship between these two populations is when the films, um, when the, the, the filmmakers turn to the others, to uh, different uh, social groups um, from, from, from which they belong. So they privilege the perspectives of the director, the perspectives of the social groups to which the director belongs. And um, the film um, represents these other groups, uh, interprets these other groups from their perspectives and from their prejudices and values. And the, the, the third one are the other senses when these other groups, né, certain groups, uh, social groups, are left out of both the filming population and the filmed population. So when it happens, uh, the question is that uh, if the, the, the real population of the, the country, of the, the society, is represented or not in its diversity uh, by the cinema uh, in these two populations. That's what I wanted to study from uh, cinema, the Brazilian cinema, because I believe that the cinema, uh, the cinema represents the, the inequalities and the hierarchies uh, of the society in which it is, it, it is uh, produced. So for instance, uh, I wanted to know if uh, women or if blacks or if indigenous were uh, well represented in Brazilian movies, and that's why I wanted to 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 find it, uh, with my research. So, uh, what I call cinemography uh, was set an application of demographic, demographic concepts, techniques, and methods to the study of cinematographic production in a country or society. Uh, we can analyze the teams, budgets resources, policies, audiences, among other socioeconomic aspects of the audiovisual production. Uh, and also we can use film analysis as a method of studying demographic phenomena and its contributions, possibilities, challenges, uh, includes uh, distributions by social markers of difference, relations with the labor market, uh, dispute space, etc and um, attention to the problem of lack of reliable data in uh, about cinema, especially. Uh, so about uh, uh, very quickly, <laughs> of course, I, I study a lot about uh, the relations, relations between cinema and gender studies or racial studies of, uh, or demography. But of course, here I will say just a few, few words about it. Uh, well, cinema was historically created and structured based on male and white values. Um, so the manipulation of the female body as an object of consumption and the depreciated representation of women reaffirmed the hier hierarchical distinction between men and female roles. Um, the same thing that I said, né? the cinema uh, represents and reproduces the um, inequalities of the society. Uh, so national cinema uh, in Brazil, uh, Brazilian cinema in general, has not reflected and captured the reality of Brazilian Blacks and indigenous people, resulting in the dissemination of an incomplete image of Brazil. Uh, here is something about uh, our, um, our racial uh, thinking, our racial um, the, the Brazilian racism um, reflects the way in which uh, the ideology determining the inequalities in social relations in service of colonization and slavery. Um, for Petrocelli, so our our actual 
racial thinking is a reflect of our history of slavery and our uh, the time of uh, uh, the colonization of Brazil. To Telles, uh, he thinks that uh, not only uh, our our racism and our racial thinking not only reflects our history, this past, this colonial and slavery, slavery past, but it's also a continuous practice. So we still actually all the time are reproducing it. So our our social practice uh, reprodu uh, reproduces its um, this inequality and this um, hierarchies of uh, of uh, color and race. Uh, and the media uh, have a very important role in, in, in this social practice. Uh, we, we, the media all the time are reproducing these inequalities, this hierarchy, the, the hierarchy um, system. Um, so self-classification is the attribution of a color or race category chosen by the person himself or herself. An outer and hetero classification is the attribution uh, made by another person. Um, and according to Osório, the difference between these two, uh, the self classification and hetero classification, um, would be a difference between uh, different subjectivities. So both are uh, subjectives. Um, and we have here in Brazil this um, uh, this survey of ethnic racial characteristics of the population made uh, by IBGE in 2008 uh, that uses self classification and hetero classification of the interviewer. And the results were uh, demonstrate a high degree of consistency between the two measures. I'm saying that because I work with uh, hetero classification in my research. And I have to justify <laughs> to say how it's used and how it's important and how can be used useful when we don't have the self uh, classification uh, data. So I, I in my um, thesis, I elaborate a database uh, of um, Brazilian cinematographic production containing a lot of uh, variables about the movies, about the individuals that um, um, that uh, role uh, key functions in the film production and about the characters. Uh, I elaborate a database of photos of directors and screenwriters for the actor classification. Uh, I work uh, with uh, different sources and I have to to merge them and correct some information that were not uh, uh, the same in, in the different sources. Um, I create some variables. I classify the films regarding the, the approach of demographic and social themes. I have to watch the movies and I also did some uh, statistical modeling. Um, I use uh, films from 1960 to 2017. Uh, it's about 5,000 movies, <laughs> uh, feature films uh, with uh, 60 minutes or more. Uh, and I have uh, variables like uh, sex of directors, screenwriters, protagonists, and some other key functions. Color race of directors, screenwriters, and protagonists. Uh, main topics addressed by the movies year of production and release, and some other uh, variables. And these are some sources I use, the uh, National Cinema Agency and Cine, some dictionaries of movies, uh, websites of movies of the production companies, um, catalogs of uh, cinema festivals, uh, promo promotional materials like trailers and the movies itself. So first, uh, before we start the this work of uh, hetero classification of the directors and screenwriters and characters, I did a test 
to adjust, make adjustments to my uh, color race attribution. Uh, so I, I uh, first I have this uh, population of uh, 463 people. I, I first classify them, and then after I compare with the self-declared uh, color and race, and the concordance observed between the hetero and the self classification was 95, more than 5, 95%. And this kappa index was 0, 0 0.89. Uh, that means a very, very high uh, consistency between the two classifications. So then I, I, I could uh, work in, in my database. So, uh, well, this is about the photos of the directors and screenwriters. Um, also, I am uh, not satisfied with my <laughs> my classification. I invite some collaborators, uh, 13 people, uh, to use the same photos that I use also to make ethnic classification. And then... Uh, they were eight men and five women. Uh, they self-classified uh, uh, themselves. Uh, two as Asian. In Brazil, we call yellow. I don't know if you, you use yellow also, but uh, well, it's Asian or Brazilian Asian. Uh, three white, one indigenous, uh, three brown or mixed race, and four black. And they reside in, in, in different states of Brazil because um, as the, the classification is something very subjective, so it's, it, it, it can differ from place to place in Brazil. Brazil is very big, so it can differ a little bit. So they these 13 people were from different places of Brazil, and we use uh, this uh, these five categories of color race used by the IBGE, Asian, Black, Indigenous, White, and multiple races, or brown. Um, and, ah, and about the addressing demographic issues, I described the, the terms addressed in each film, uh, and I create some categories of social demographic terms of interest. Um, and some uh, uh, categories were this was uh, migration, gender relations, fertility and reproduction, mortality and morbidity, ethnic race relations, family, aging and longevity, childhood or youth, religion, social issues or human rights, ecological or environmental issues, work or labor market, and politics. So uh, I, I, I have here some uh, results of my, my, my thesis. <laughs> uh, first, here we have the percentage distribution of the Brazilian movies according to the sex of the directors. Um, we see here uh, only this, um, this uh, last decade I study, we have that 70, more than 76 percent of the movies were directed exclusively by men. 16% uh, were directed exclusively by women and seven, about 7% 7 uh, have uh, both uh, directors, men and, and women working together. You see here uh, the total of the, the, the movies, more, uh, almost uh, 5,000 uh, movies. I've become crazy to <laughs> watching these movies, but okay. And here uh, we have the percentage distribution of the Brazilian movies according to the sex of the script writers, the screenwriters. The numbers are um, not, so far, not so far from the, the direction. We have here 14% of the movies have um, uh, scripts written by women. The difference from the direction and the, the script is that this number, uh, the scripts written with, uh, by both women and men are, um, are higher than the direction, about 19%. Um, 
the cinematographers, well, uh, the cinematographers, uh, cinematog cinematography is the, the key function that has the less um, percentage of uh, women. In the last decade, we have only 6% of the movies uh, with the uh, women cinematographers and 5% with both women and men. And here, uh, the sex and gender of protagonists for the characters of the movies, I could uh, classify also the gender, not only the sex. Uh, I, I, I try to work with the, the not binary uh, classification of gender. So we have here that 20% uh, only in, in, in the, the last case. I, I'm not talking about uh, the past. <laughs> So of course the past is a little bit worse, but um, only between um, 2011 and 2015, we have 20% uh, of the movies, the Brazilian movies, uh, with the women protagonists. And also almost 20%, 19% with both protagonists, men and women. And 0 0.9 with the transgender uh, people. So here uh, is a um, relation between the sex of the directors and the sex of the other key functions. We can see uh, very cl clearly you know, that, that um, the films directed by men have much more men in all the the other roles, all the other functions, um, and the movies directed by women, we see that uh, we have here more women protagonists, more women protagonists, and a little bit more films uh, with both women and men protagonists. We have much more here women after directors, uh, well, cinematographers is the same. <laughs> we have a little bit uh, more women here and both, but uh, we see that uh, the the men um, uh, they 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 really uh, this they dominate this this area. Uh, editors we have much more women, um, producers and screenwriters. So when we have the women in the direction, we have we ten we, we have this um this chance to have more women and other key functions uh well here uh is the percentage distribution of directors by sex and color race uh according to the ethnic classification made, made by me and the ethnic classification made by the group of collaborators that i call the modal ethnic classification uh, well, in both uh, both uh, 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 classifications, we see that we have more than ninety percent uh, of the directors white, and more than seventy percent white men. So, well, <laughs> there's nothing much more to say. This number really shocked me a lot. Uh, we see, for instance, that uh, multiracial are uh, the same in both uh, uh, classifications, a little bit more than 6%, and Blacks only 1.6, uh, 1.8% of the directors of the movies. Uh, so the concordance observed between both ethnic classifications was very high. Um, 0.98 percent in in the kappa index that's that's really very very high and here uh ah for the ones who doesn't know nothing about brazilian population just to compare uh the white people from uh, this uh i i have here the census uh from 1991 um until the pinade 2015 that it's the same, uh, uh, more or less the same period I, I take here. Here I, I, I studied the, the movies from 1995 
to 2016. So uh, the, the white directors were more than 90%. And here we see that the white population uh, is from 51%, 52% to 45%. And here the multiracial population in Brazil is about, uh, was about uh, in 2015, 45%. And here we see that the directors were 6%. And black, um, black, uh, blacks were uh, almost 9%. Uh, and here we have only, um, well, oh, sorry. Yes, here, only uh, less than 2% of the directors. So just to compare. Paula, just to let you know that you have about five minutes more and then we will have a, a discussion. Five minutes? Ten minutes. No, five oh my minutes. God. Sorry, ten minutes <laughs> long. Ten minutes. And then, and, then, and then you will have a discussion. Just okay, I will hurry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, okay. So, so we are... that, we miss, uh, that we miss some parts, you know. Okay, okay, I will hurry because I have a lot of things to, to say. <laughs> So here is the, the, the percentage distribution of script, script writers that's almost the same. For 94% uh, of script writers were white and 70, almost 72 white men. So we can see that we have a, a very high inequality in Brazilian cinema. And here the protagonists, um, we have about 82% um, uh, Protagonists, the movies uh, with the protagonists is white, and almost uh, half of them, 49%, uh, only white men. Well, here is the, the, the same comparison between the color uh, of the directors and here the directors and script writers. Uh, we see that uh, we have um, also a relation. And here, the directors with protagonists, we clearly have a, a relation between them. Well, here um, is the social demographic issues in Brazilian cinema. Um, about more than 30% than of the movies talks about uh, gender relations, uh, more than 25% family. And here, migration, the demographic component that's more uh, addressed in Brazilian movies. Uh, more than 20% of the movies, the studied movies, uh, talks about migration. Well, I, I can pass here. Uh, on the films that address gender relations, we have that 62% uh, refer specifically to women. 17% uh, have a gay or lesbian femme or protagonist. 15% um, address uh, violence against women. About migration, uh, on the films that deal with uh, the theme of migration, 48, almost 49% address international movements, um, 36 address national migratory movements, 33 movements motivated by economic issues and work, and almost 15% about um, return migration. Uh, here about uh, uh, ethnic and racial relations. Um, here, it's also a, a kind of a relation between the color and race of the protagonists and the themes addressed in the movies. I'm, I'm sorry, here I, 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 I didn't translate the, the, the figure, but I, will, but I think you can understand. With the, the, the white protagonists, we have here gender, migration, family. The black protagonists, color, race, color, race violence, social issues, racism and prejudice. So we have some other themes emerging in these films. Um, here, the white directors and black directors, the same thing. Here, in the black director, you see color, race, violence, violence here. You see, violence in, in white directors, very, very small here family politics. So we have some some specific themes in, in, in films directed or with the, uh, uh, by black people or 
uh, with protagonists, uh, black protagonists. Here the same for the script writer, white script writer and black script writer, color race here. We see here uh, uh, color race is, is here, very small, and here is big. Social issues, violence again, migration, uh, work, religion. Um, I, I can't see religion here, it's very small. Uh, social is small, so we have some differences um, about the, with the, the tense, the issues addressed by the movies and the color or race of uh, directors, protagonists and uh, screenwriters. Here the statistical modeling, I will pass, pass that, <laughs> uh, some results. Um, uh, here is only to show that there is a relation between sex and uh, sex, gender, and color of, of, of these key functions. Uh, for instance, in the documentary films, the fact that the director is a woman increases the chances of the protagonist being a woman by 370%. Uh, for instance, um, here, the, in, in in films with a female protagonist, the fact that the film is a documentary also increases the chance of a female director. Um, here we have some other, uh, in both fiction and documentaries, the fact that the screenwriter is a woman increases the chances of the protagonist being a woman by 420%. So, um, and here we have, some very strange numbers, but they are correct. I promise you <laughs> they are correct. Uh, in films with a male screenwriter, the fact that the producer is a woman increases the chance of the director being a woman by 850%. Uh, here in films with a female screenwriter, uh, the occurrence of a female producer increases the chances of a female director by 740%. Well, I will pass here also. Um, uh, so the results of the research uh, confirm that we have an unequal distribution in Brazilian cinematographic production in terms of gender and color race, of direction, script and protagonism positions, and of sex in other key functions. Um, there is an association between the filming population and the film population. Uh, and an association between sex and color race of directors, screenwriters, and protagonists with the themes addressed in the films. And also, we can say that the relations between cinema and demography can be useful for an examination of our society's structures and inequalities. I, I have here uh, another example, not my, my research, but uh, only to compare uh, the Marta Lausen from the Center for the Study of Women in Television and Film, um, she, she made this, uh, the celluloid sale in this research uh, about the employment of behind the scenes women in top grossing uh, US films. Uh, so uh, in 2022, women accounted for 18% of directors. So it's not very far from the Brazilian numbers. Um, in other roles, women comprise the 90% of writers, 25% of executive producers, 7% uh, of cinematographers. Remember, in Brazil, what 6%? So it's not very different. So it's not a kind. Uh, it's not a problem of only Brazilian cinema. And she also made Marta Lausen also made this other research called uh, "It's a Man's Celluloid Words About." the female characters in the top engrossing US films. And um, in 2022, also 33% of the, these top engrossing films feature solely female protagonists. Um, and 14, uh, both, a uh, combination of male and female protagonists. Uh, the female characters were younger than their male uh, partners. Um, here we see, we see for, for female characters, <clears throat> sorry, they were 
61% were white, for male, 68%. Uh, so we see that um, also there in, in Hollywood, uh, we have this inequality with um, uh, about gender and uh, color race uh, representations uh, of, uh, of the population. Uh, so here are some other examples uh, uh, of the results of the, the Martha Lausen's research. Uh, females' characters were more likely than males to have a non-marital status. Uh, on the other hand, male characters were more likely than, than females to have an identifiable job. And well, we have some other, um, other comparisons here. I can uh, after um, send you the link for the this research from Martha Lausen. It's very interesting. And here I just want to finalize with some demographic um, uh, issues in cinema, some examples about uh, international movies. What's happened to Monday uh, is a science fiction thriller. Uh, it's it's very uh, this film is very recent. Uh, this this one here, Lied, is from an Austrian filmmaker, Michael Haneck. Uh, it's, it's very beautiful, this, this film. Uh, this is a Brazilian film, uh, The Boy and the World. It was nominated for, for an Oscar. Uh, it's very famous also. I don't know if you know there. Uh, it's an animated movie. It's very, very beautiful about uh, migration. Um, this is a French uh, film, winner of uh, the Palme d'Or in Cannes. Um, La Jaula de Ouro uh, from Mexico. Uh, it's very, very famous also. The Immigrant, uh, this is an American movie. It's more Hollywood style. <laughs> uh, La no Una Noche, it's uh, from Cuba. Very interesting. Very, uh, I like uh, a lot this, this movie. Well, we have some other examples. Um, this also film nominated for Palme d'Or and César, Le Havre. Well, that's it. I'm sorry for the confusion in the beginning. <laughs> Thank you. Dankeschön. <laughs>